Welcome back. In this video, I will go over how to experimentally determine the critical micelle concentration using conductivity measurements. Surfactants are usually represented in two portions, one with a polar head group, now that with the sphere that is usually hydrophilic, that is, it likes to be in contact with water, and a portion that is mainly alkyl chain. That is hydrophobic, meaning that it wants to avoid water. At a high enough concentration, these surfactants will orient themselves such that the head, head groups are oriented toward the H2O because they're hydrophilic, they want to interact with the water, but inside the high alkyl chains orient together so that they are screened from water because they are hydrophobic. They don't want to be interacting with water. At interfaces such as the water-air interface, these surfactants will also orient themselves in a specific way so that the polar head group interacts with water and the alkyl chain interacts with the air more so that the energetics is more favorable. It's worth noting that the formation of such spherical structures called micelles is spontaneous. Recall that the Gibbs free energy is equal to delta H minus T delta S. The change in entropy of the whole system is in fact greater than zero, even though that the change in entropy of the surfactants is smaller than zero because they occupy a fixed amount of microstates within the micelle so that their entropy change is decreased. However, if we look at the change in entropy of the water or the solute, normally the H2O have to be interacting with each individual surfactant molecule. They are more constrained when the surfactant is not in micelles. However, if they form micelle structures, they don't have to surround all the surface area of the surfactant. They only need to surround part of them, only the outer surface of the micelles, so that there is a lot of water's microstates being freed compared to the surfactant's microstates, so that the change in entropy is greater than zero and is greater than the change of surfactants. Therefore, we have a greater change in entropy of the system and that will make the delta G negative, and therefore the process is spontaneous. The concentration at which micelles form is called the critical micelle concentration, or CMC. At CMC, many physical properties changes. For example, for sodium dodecyl sulfate, or SDS, at room temperature, you see that the surface tension decreases before CMC but remains rather constant after CMC. The osmotic pressure increases before CMC but the slope levels off after the CMC. Also, the turbidity increases drastically after CMC. And interestingly, the molar conductivity becomes nonlinear and decreases after the CMC. And in this experiment, we will utilize such change in physical property to determine the critical micelle concentration by measuring the conductivity of solutions. Since we're using conductivity to determine the CMC, let us first discuss the relationship between conductivity and concentration. Conductivity kappa, usually with units of microsiemens per centimeter, increases linearly with the concentration, so that when we graph the conductivity kappa with respect to concentration, we expect to see a linear increase where the y intercept kappa is kappa zero, a constant, and the slope is slope is k of kappa, also a constant. We can determine another quantity called the equivalent conductivity. Lambda that has a unit of Siemens times centimeter squared per mole, which is defined as the conductivity divided by concentration of the solution. The equivalent conductivity decreases linearly with the square root of concentration. 
So when, when we plot the equivalent conductivity uh, lambda with respect to the concentration, the square root of concentration C, we expect to see a linear decrease where the y-intercept is lambda zero, a constant, and the slope is equal to negative k lambda. And k lambda is a positive constant. In the experiment, we would expect that the conductivity would change with respect to concentration, especially at the critical micelle concentration. For example, let's say we have conductivity k and conductivity. At a higher regime, at a more concentrated solution, we would have higher conductivity. So this is like, for example, stock solution. And after we dilute it, we perform dilution on it, it will have decreased conductivity. And then it will almost decrease linearly according to the, the rule that we have discussed. However, at the critical micelle concentration, TMC, the slope would change slope of the curve would change so that it could increase or decrease before CMC so that you can see that there is a distinct curve. So that using those distinct slopes, we can locate the critical micelle concentration. Similarly, with equivalent conductivity, we can also perform such graphs, but on the x-axis, we use the square root of conductivity. So for example, at higher concentrations, we we'll expect that have some sort of slope. This is the stock solution, and we do serial dilutions. For example, we have such a slope. However, at some critical micelle concentration, the slope might change. For example, let's say we have a greater slope. So that at that point, we can locate the critical micelle concentration. You should be able to verify using these two methods if the CMC matches or does not match and discuss why is that. The method for measuring conductivity will be discussed later in the experimental setup. After knowing how to measure CMC using conductivity, we can explore the dependence of CMC on other factors, and in this experiment we'll explore the dependence on the alkyl chain length. The Clevens equation suggests that the log of CMC is proportional to the alkyl chain length n, so that each surfactant will have a polar head and remember have an alkyl chain. And the number of carbons on that alkyl chain is equal to n the alkyl chain length. So that when we graph the linear graph of the log of CMC, on the y-axis and on the axis we will have the number of carbon atoms or the alkyl chain length, we would expect to see a negative trend where you will be able to determine using data. And in each of these data, you can determine the CMC using the conductivity measurements that you have determined. For example, we use the conductivity with respect to concentration, you should be able to see that the curve have change in slope and determine CMC for each point, we can determine that. We can determine the critical micelle concentration using that method at each point using different surfactants with different ends. And in this experiment, you will be using the number of alkyl chains of 12, 16, and 18, and you can compare D tab, H tab, and O tab across the Clevens equation and know that they are cationic. You can also compare the SDS and D tab since they have the same alkyl chain length, but they are uh, having different charges. One is anionic and one is cationic. Experimental procedure is actually quite simple. You will first calibrate the conductivity meter that will provide to you, where it digitally says what is the conductivity kappa here. You will immerse the conductivity probe in your solution. However, you, you want to make sure that the conductivity probe is not touching the edge of the container or the stir bar, or else it will 
uh, screw up the measurement. Before taking each measurement you want, make sure to wait at least two minutes for the system to equilibrate before recording the conductivity measurement. By system, I don't mean the number that is shown on the screen. That is the instrument. We don't wait for instrument to equilibrate because instrument equilibrates quite fast because the measurement is quite accurate. However, we want to wait the system to equilibrate because the micelle formation might take longer time depending on the surfactant. And we want to wait such time to allow it the system to equilibrate so that you could possibly see that the instrument uh, has value that has that is increasing or decreasing over time. That is because the system has not equilibrated. In this video, we discussed micelle formation and the physical property changes at the CMC. We discussed how we can measure the conductivity and determine the CMC and see how CMC depends on the number of alkyl chains on the surfactant, which is the number of carbon atoms on the alkyl chains.